Hello, it's me, Morgan Freeman. I have kidnapped your family using my Hollywood contacts. They will be released to you so long as you continue to watch Fano podcasts. No one will believe you. Three, two, one. I am the 10th man, Beef King Salad, and the host of the Farno podcast, and today I'm joined by the skeleton in everybody's closet, Harriet Skelly. How are you, sir? Oh, you know, just chilling out in just, the closet. Just chilling out in everyone's <laughs> closet? Fantastic. Today we are I'm discussing... I'm in the closet. I have pull out my the closet. gun. <laughs> today exactly. we're just... Dis- Exactly. Today we're discussing uh, a year in review in the gaming industry, uh, gaming for 2018. And um, yeah. I've got the Wikipedia article up here, and I'm just going through the Game Awards, which was held on December 6th, and God of oh. War won Game of the Year. What's your opinion on that fact? Did you even play it? Because I certainly I, did not. I certainly did not play it. <laughs> oh, well, well let's, let's gloss over that subject, because uh, well, neither what of us... I can, what I can tell you, though, is... Um, I personally believe that um, that Game of the Year awards should um, should not go to sequels in any shape or form because <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of cheating to be perfectly honest. Because if if your game has has already been you know it's already come out and then you've you've gone and you've worked on it and made more stuff, then that's you've, you've basically got an unfair advantage. Effectively, you're not you're not giving new brand new series as a chance to to get in there i feel like there should be a different category it should just be simply you know best game sequel. sequel yeah, yeah best um, sequel of the year. i agree with that except for one fact god of war yeah. this new one does not play like any oh, like, others. like the original game god of war yeah yeah but also my opinion of god of war is that it shouldn't have been kratos anymore um <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, and if we're, if we're going to delve that deeply, I reckon they should have just started taking everything they had done and started a new series with yeah. just a different character and gone Thanks, for different absolutely. gods. But they're all like, absolutely. no, he's a known name brand. Yeah, but I and think it's just just interesting. Yeah, yeah, that, th- like that God of War should have because God of the 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 idea of a God of War is present in, in every religion and every religion that has multiple gods. In fact, even in um even in uh, your uh, standard Christianity theistic religion, um, there is an archangel of war who is effectively the god of war. So, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really, doesn't really matter where you're coming from. It, I think it would work. Obviously, they couldn't do the, um, they couldn't do the Christian religion because uh, EA kind of owned that. Uh, with, um, <laughs> <laughs> they own the, the IP of Christianity. They own, they do. They they own Dante's Infer- Inferno, which is, um, which is basically um god of war in uh in the nine circles of hell so well, at least it tried it tried to be god of war in that s- circumstance so yeah um but honestly because they've they, they're going they went with the norse stuff i think it would have been way way cooler if it was like a like a really grizzled um thor or or one of the other um gods or even just like a just a, a standard nordic person who like got god powers that would have been really cool, um, simply because if they use if they use with the, with what they were going for with the Norse stuff is obviously to back off that IP, right? To to everyone knows Thor and Odin and all of the all of that pantheon because of Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thank you very much. That they could have easily have sold that as Thor instead, and yeah. people would have been like, "What? This is a game about." This is a game about Thor. You mean like the movie? And then people are like, not, not really, but kind of, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it'd be so, like getting into that IP without actually using that IP. Like a little exactly. bit of Disney money this way. Thank you. Yeah. And Disney wouldn't have been able to say shit because they've been stealing, you know, Norse iconography. <laughs> yeah. You don't own an entire country <laughs> and culture's history and religion. Exactly. Um, so moving on from the fact that neither of us actually played it, uh, yeah. Astro Boy Rescue Mission won Best VR uh, Game. Yeah. Yes. Uh, story, story and Narrative was won by Red Dead Redemption 2. 
Uh, a lot of things got won by Red Dead Redemption. It also too. won audio, sound design, and music. Um, yep. Game direction and design was won by God of War. But uh, Roger yep. Clark won as the best character performance uh, as uh, Arthur Morgan. So that's good. That was a pretty good um, performance, honestly. It was yeah. really good Western stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> basically. Uh, Red Dead Redemption. It, the thing is that, like, is interesting for me is that Red Dead Redemption came in very late into the game, but still won. You mean later in the, the year? Later in the year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the game itself. I'm saying, like, late in the game is the year. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it still won, which is really interesting for me. Um, what else was released this year that, that okay, could have so, really gone in there? Um, I'm literally just skimming through the list here, and I could name mm. every game that I played out of it. Like, Kerbal Space Program was released on Xbox and 3. Um, yeah, PS4. but it was released before that, so it's a bit... And it's the same it was, with um, Subnautica, which I just got in, on my PS4, which will be intriguing to play because my laptop, when I was playing it, could not handle it, and I had to have it up on, like, a massive um massive thing yeah. to to stop the cpu fan from like destroying everyone yeah um much. monster hunter world probably should yeah. have won something it came out in january um yeah, that's very true that is that is the other one thing that i'm like odd about the the awards it didn't win a single thing other than um it won uh the rpg it won rpg um which is not on the wiki thanks wiki yeah. uh, but on the game awards website uh, down with RPG category list. Best role playing game. It did win uh, best role playing game, which I also kind of find interesting because it's not it's not your conventional role playing game as well. You know, like there isn't there isn't that like it isn't really that story driven. It's kind of it's kind of weird. It's like very gameplay driven. Yeah, um, it, I think the, to be brutally honest, the story parts of that game are the bit that annoy you because it's like, yeah, oh, hey, we're doing on, on my way. mission. Join on my mission. Yeah. I can't until you watch all the cutscenes. <laughs> I gotta fucking wait. Yeah, it's fucking, yeah, exactly. It's it's exactly like that. Where I'm thinking like, you know, Ni, Ni no Kune um, 2 came out and Octopath Traveler as well. Like, they're one of the big, big hitters for RPGs. And they, nom- they were nominated, but they didn't win. And it's interesting because, yeah, Monster Hunter World's there. I mean, I guess, like, that's the thing is that it's not it's not narrative-based. It is just best RPG game. And out of all those RPGs, it was the one that was purchased the most. Yeah. So it's it definitely going to get the most votes. Probably um, save Capcom. Yeah, it absolutely save Capcom from basically going under. So. They have destroyed everything else. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see because there the i'm just looking here and it's like kingdom come deliverance came out and i thoroughly enjoyed that game it was probably one of the hardest combat styled games that i'd ever come across Mm -hmm. um there were a lot of winners this year i'll say that in the beginning of this beginning of this recording there's a lot of winners this year and a lot of losers yeah there's a lot of really good games a lot of we're we're kind of inundated with games these days like there is not especially if you're a pc player you have unlimited options when it comes to a lot of kinds of games thanks to steam and indie games development obviously playstation and xbox kind of suffer a little bit um playstation not so much <laughs> but uh um, well like, for, is, for going to that though they as they're protecting their product um they have to spend a little bit more time scrutinizing the product they're selling and that's why do. a lot of these games have taken a a small amount of time to switch over um exactly subnautica rust that sort of thing have been in you know beta alpha for ages like day z is a subject i don't want to talk about but i will mention <laughs> in effect of pointing out what you don't do and that yeah. is a perfect example of something you don't do you don't have it with you update and it's like oh we've updated something guys and everyone's like cool loading up the game reading the the update notes and it's oh we've added gardening yeah. like what the hell are you doing yeah pretty much um any any massive standouts for you for this year before we start going through you know what came out and how well it did and how poorly it did i'm seeing the um, survival there haha <laughs> <I> take that <laughs> Well, uh, basically, I haven't really had the chance to play a lot of, like, really brand new games, um, which is 
interesting. Um, it's mainly because my graphics card's been dead and I've had really no money because I've been trying to so, sort that out and go to Japan as well. So um, basically the only like recent games that I've played, I've been on the Switch. Yep. Um, so things like um, good old Mario Party, um, Overcooked. Um, what else? What else? Um Play some VR games, obviously, because you've got, got VR as well. So, Which is a fantastic um, platform and the reason I'm in yep. pain. <laughs> exactly. Um, so multiplayer co-op VR um, is, a, is should really be the next big thing, um, honestly, um, past uh, Fortnite stuff. <laughs> Fortnite VR, that's the next one. There you go. Uh, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's um, catered towards people that are poor, so therefore they won't be able to actually afford VR. So yeah, it's it won't also, sell well. It's also catered. It's also not meant to be worn by anybody under twelve, so it's definitely not going to come to them. Um, but anyway, um, that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, really, I haven't had I haven't had much to um, to go off of. I've seen a lot of really cool stuff that's coming that I'm really interested in. Um, it's coming, but yeah. Um, and obviously, I still want to play Red Dead. Um, I just don't have the money at the moment. Um, Fair enough. I know a guy if you don't need a kidney. Um, <laughs> exactly. Some of the standouts uh, for me, I'd have to say, was Detroit Become Human. That was fantastic. Mm. Uh, beautiful storytelling. Absolutely fantastically done game. The graphics are amazing. I played it on easy to play through for the channel. And the reason I did that is because I just wanted to blitz kind of through because you don't want to see a same person fail because they can't hold down 17 buttons at the same time yeah that's also yeah it's a story driven game if you want to play for a for an audience you just want to play the story you don't want to fuck around We're trying to trying to do the same bit over and over again if you're not getting anything out of it it's actually amazing how many games this year have been ported to the nintendo, uh, the nintendo switch it's actually fantastic yeah. how much they've done um oh, they've definitely done a lot of work to try and get to try and get that off the ground um, yeah they're doing they're doing yeah. really well which uh, is really kind of sad about you know them removing the ability to play the old games but hey we're not we're not talking about that right now um <laughs> yeah uh good old smash came out as well um yeah, yeah. I, I haven't played that because i don't have a switch no neither I, i'm not gonna pay for it um <laughs> <and> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I'm like, I'm not the biggest fighting game person in, in the world. Um, definitely not, even close. Um, I think it would be an alright party game. Um, I don't see it as really a competitive kind of game. And that's probably going to like, it might annoy some people, especially considering it is at, um, at competitive fighting things. I The reason I don't think it is a really competitive fighting game is because there's a whole lot of characters that are really busted. So busted in fact that they've actually had to be banned and, and things like that. That doesn't happen <laughs> for other games. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. Um, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a fun, like put together sort of, um, the, the roster is, is fantastic. That's basically the big thing about it. Um, cause it's quite large this time around. Exactly. They've got a whole lot of stuff. They're still missing, you know, um, Wild Luigi and, and a bunch of other things, but we won't even get into that again. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, the competitive scene um, is really interesting, especially when we're looking at the, the categories. Um, best, where is it? Best esports game was won by um, Overwatch this year. Well, at least it went to Overwatch and something else that wasn't. The thing is, that it's interesting that Fortnite was even nominated at all because I don't. It's not. It's not really one of those either. Um, <laughs> it's just. It's just. Yeah. It's quite funny um, that the only. That yeah. It's esports in, in, in a nutshell is is um is very very interesting. Um, and it's weird that there's no other fighting games that, are, that were nominated, especially considering that fighting. Games is on the list as well best fighting game went to um went to dragon ball fighter z obviously well <laughs> it is the best fighting game that came out exactly exactly it is the it is the best fighting game that came out this year so it's it's obvious but it's it's interesting that their 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 category for for um for esports didn't include fighting game at all 
which is weird because from yeah, it is it is the original fighting game. Like, yeah, it is the original, original esports game. esports game. <laughs> so it's like because it was only really uh, your your standard real time strategies that actually brought out esports yeah. as and prize money above sort of outside of just like small fighting tournaments exactly it was fighting tournaments to begin with um with things like street fighter and all that stuff hell you did um, it at the bloody arcade you were just exactly. sitting there and someone else would walk over and put a coin in and that was that yeah. was that was the original yeah. that was so the beginning man. of beginning of esports but yet it's not on there um which is yeah it's quite interesting um you know and you can't say that like it takes a different kind of skill because it's it's way more skillful than a lot of those kind of games um but yeah, I, I guess maybe they, they were going for like, it's it's because it's more team orientated. Um, well, it's, it's something a, a large company, let's, let's put it this way, because money, money makes money. And so yeah. what a large company can put behind a bunch of weirdos. And because yeah. they're, they're not honestly the most uh, but the interesting thing is that those... human beings outside of what they can do behind <laughs> a, you know, behind a monitor. I don't know. Some people, are, some of those esports people are pretty interesting. I don't follow any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, interesting is like a character sort of study, but all right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, interesting as in, like, Adam Savage, like, actually does stuff. You know, I else. see. Right. Yeah. <laughs> my, my Twitter's limited to actually people I give a shit about. <laughs> and someone who's who's the captain of some CSGO team for, like, this year doesn't really appeal to me as, like, cool, I wonder what we have in common. Oh, he likes, mm. he likes video games. Cool. cool. <laughs> uh there's some standout games i played this year um for me new releases we we basically any it, you go through the catalog of what we played on the channel and anything that came yeah. out this year stands out as being well done because yeah. otherwise we wouldn't have put our money into it because uh, in new zealand games are fucking expensive they are. unbelievably expensive and it's mm. it's it's painful and you really Pretty have much. to think about what game you actually want to play for the next you know, X amount of time. What I find disappointing in, in, as, as New Zealand as a culture is the amount of kids I see on a weekly basis doing Fortnite-related dances. And then yep. you'll see some clickbait from Facebook yeah. or whatever social media platform you follow saying that, you know, all these celebrities who have done the dances and that's why they're famous are now realizing yep. that their IP has literally been stolen because they've literally copied what the character, the actual actor did or yep. performer did and it's like hey you guys kind of owe me money and they're like no we didn't that's not who it happened no other people yeah. did that dance before you did it's like mm, yep. that's not 100 percent correct because if you're taking like almost a borderliner a 3d map of the person dancing and then making it exactly that and then selling them yeah. as a microtransaction yeah well the same thing happens in um you know in league of legends as well like there's blatant rip off dancing and and even voice lines and all that sort of stuff blatant ip ripping off but they've they've never yeah you know they all go for the same sort of price model so it's yeah those those sort of games just the the freemium model and that way it always lends itself to that and the only reason that fortnite is getting such such um uh, notoriety is because of how famous it is because of how how open it is basically um, so what you're saying is it's like one of those monsters from like a children's nursery tale so if we stop believing that fortnite exists it'll just have no power and go away no no absolutely oh. not um it's more that because it's because of its um it's broad demographic because it's it it panders to to children um that's basically it, Roy. <laughs> That's basically it. It's because it panders to children. Because there is the the people with the most time on this earth are children. Um and unemployed the, adults. And unemployed adults. Um, you know. They of course of course it's gonna be that. Like, why wouldn't it be? You know? And because it's the most most popular by just view standard. It means that all the Twitch people are doing it, all the YouTube people are doing it because it gets them the most views. So it's just that that like dangerous spiral of of badness that goes on with that. So you know, it happens. It happens. The trend will probably go away eventually once um once kids stop really caring about it, um, which they probably will soon. They don't have long attention spans. It'll just take another 
you know, another freemium game to come out. Um, it's, it's Pokemon Go all over again. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's worse. It's worse than Pokemon Go. Uh, you don't have people, like, in giant crowds running around the street being like, there's a purple shotgun over there and, like, running off to it, though. That's true. That's oh, true. my God. I hope I didn't give them an idea. Fortnite Go. Oh, my God. That would be terrible and awful. Oh, or we could do it. We could do Battle Royale Go. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll do it. Yeah. We'll make it right now. We'll make shitloads of money. Yeah, hang on. Like, I'm just like and, hacking and into the mainframe and doing some coding. Yeah, we'll get a bunch of people. Get a bunch of people. Like, we'll get a bunch of health officials to say that like it's really bad for people to play it. Um, so well, we get even more autism. Not- yeah, so we get even more notoriety. Um, and then we'll get a whole bunch of Twitch streamers playing it. Um, cause now live switch live streaming is now like it's life, fourth, isn't it? Hang live on, streaming is, is like fourth on the, on the list. So yeah, I'm browsing now yeah. and we've got Fortnite. with, this is right now while we're recording, by the way, folks. So if you, if you look yeah. at it and go, they're lying, that's not true. This is at <laughs> the time of recording. There are 64, almost 65,000 people watching someone just talking to them. Yeah. Just, just live streaming, just v- vlogging vlogging in a streaming format yeah i mean let's cook something for god's sake anyway um <laughs> this is about meant to be about games not streaming but it kind of always comes back to that really well to be brutally honest these days if the two things don't go together your product won't sell because what yeah. people buy well is it won't what- sell it won't sell as much because obviously yeah. there's still games out there that people can play without having to stream them but it's a there's a different yeah, there's a different like, it's sort of like the the wage gap for for purchasing stuff. If your if your pla- if your thing is is extremely streamable and and people like it immediately and it becomes it becomes its own meme, then you're gonna get millions and billions of dollars out of out of nowhere. But if your game is not like that, maybe just like a couple of people like it or just a, just a, a standard demographic like a few thousand people, then you're still going to probably make your money back if you've planned for this correctly. You know your demographic, but you're not you're not going to make millions and millions of dollars. Obviously, you're not going to make so much money that you um, you stop making your uh, Unreal Tournament game because you've got Fortnite money. Yeah, thanks, Epic. Um, <laughs> yeah, which is really interesting to me. I don't know why they would, would why they would think of doing that because basically they could just you know use that to make even more money to be like. Hey, we're making Unreal Tournament, but we're making it Battle Royale because we also own Fortnite. And then people will eat that crap right up. Yeah. They really will. Like, and then you just plaster it from the makers of Fortnite, Unreal Tournament, Battle Royale. Yeah. Done. <laughs> yeah. Millions of dollars. <laughs> Sell the whole thing. <laughs> it's interesting yeah. going, going through what's still popular um, because basically any, any game release is a popularity contest you're releasing yeah. a game so everybody buys it and then talks about it and then encourages more people to buy it and that's why well you, we look at the success of now apparently hopefully the mm. the replacement for gta 5 and the yeah. amount of channels because now we're going back into people making money off products that they bought mm. the amount of channels that have thousands of videos dedicated to something or thousands of hours should i say dedicated to something and one of those things has been gta 5 yeah and if hopefully if online goes well uh red dead to redemption will replace that and hopefully that rockstar games will um focus the amount of energy they put into five gta 5 onto online but i'm looking at it right now yeah, and there's still not. more people watching grand theft auto 5 than red dead That's online red dead red redemption Dead's- that isn't mainly because Red Dead's online isn't isn't yeah complete, full yeah isn't out yet so you know once it comes out it absolutely will um, eighteen thousand people watching Heavy Rain that's bizarre <laughs> beating out like how has Dead by Daylight got so many viewers that's crazy yeah hey look we could be live streaming to Twitch because there's talk shows well, and podcasts on here <laughs> we should <laughs> we could do that instead you know yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll see we'll have to get in we'll have to get out of here we'll have to actually like have cameras and stuff so set up for them so maybe not 
yeah when i when i buy a house and have a spare room and you know yeah. get all that st- good stuff done if you Absolutely. like comment and subscribe and give us money you know share it with your friends <laughs> Harriet Skelly can get a five hundred dollar uh, brand new graphics card, and I can get a three hundred five hundred dollars. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, greedy. I need a ten eighty. I think I'm not wasting time on this. On this, come on. Um, Fair enough. I've got ten eighty. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so it is fifteen hundred dollar graphics card, and I'll get a three hundred thousand dollar house. So I'm about twenty five thousand dollars short, folks. So if you could just yeah. um, so if you could just uh, give us that much money, we'll if you just yeah, if you can just like, comment, and subscribe, so we get twenty five million <laughs> views, and then a dollar from every view, that'd be fantastic. Hell yeah! But so if you just no. What the hell is this thing? I have no idea. I can't see with your eyes. I'm just looking at the, the silly stuff that's being streamed at the moment. Um, uh, yeah i mean it yeah that's basically it though is that it always it'll at the moment it comes back to that if you want to make millions and billions of dollars obviously um if you're you know like places like blizzard and, and activision and, and ea and all that sort of stuff they that's what they're trying to do you know they're trying to to get a piece of that the that millions and billions of dollars um which is why we're getting things like you know black ops has got battle royale stuff in it now and and all that sort of stuff it's interesting because developers are focusing on the game genre not the business model exactly and i think there's one savior is because it's just a combination of microtransactions and basically short-term endorphin releases which is a battle royale game yeah but this is the thing is that they will they will do that, especially things like Call of Duty and all that stuff will end up doing the same sort of business model. You know, EA are trying to push all that stuff. Um, Street Fighter Five has basically pushed that stuff just pretty much everywhere. They're they're trying to they're trying it on for size, basically. They're all trying that model, that that payment model on as much as they can. They obviously still want to make money on the selling of the of the game, so it's yeah. lesser, but it's still there. And it will it will probably get worse before it gets better, <laughs> especially it, if uh, we don't make, um, you know, if we don't properly outline how uh, loot boxes are actually, um, then it's just going to continue like that. Form of gambling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I was going back and I had a brain fart because I was just like, what the fuck? When did Street Fighter get a Battle Royale mode? It's like, no, no microtransactions. <laughs> I've, got the, I've got the microtransaction model. They're making yeah. you pay for the for the characters that you would normally unlock by playing the game. Which is dumb because... Yeah. What are you... Because that's not how a... Yeah. And that's not like... That's not even... Yeah. It doesn't make a lick of sense whatsoever because... in a street fight... Especially for a street fighter game because the, the main um, consum- consumer of a street fighter game is the e- is the esports again is esports and if you're telling your esports community that they need to pay for all of the stuff for them to even be able to play the game correctly or at the the the, the level that they need to be able to play it then what are you doing <laughs> like yeah i'm still waiting for keen i just you know yeah you're not getting your you're not getting your your if you make it hard for your gamer to get what they what they want out of this game then why would they play it you know and why would they buy it as well if if they know they're just gonna have to keep buying stuff from you i never understood that like there's a difference between like the freemium model like league and 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 fortnite get because you come in right you come in free right and then you, you pay more money so they get you right away with that but if you're paying already and then you have to pay more to get what you want then um it's no <laughs> like model. yeah and the thing is that like even nintendo who have who have uh, who are objectively really bad at with their business models didn't do that with smash they didn't yeah. do that yeah. <laughs> they were like no here's everything you can unlock everything it's an interesting unlocking system but it still still works um, in comparison to the old games for someone who hasn't played it is it like you have to go through and then beat the person and then you unlock them with yeah, a certain exactly. character so that's that's the same as the other ones then yeah exactly it's exactly the same so there's no there's no change they don't they don't they you know their their money making scheme is is just selling the game because yeah. that's what it should be when, it, when you're making a game that's kind of the point like yeah i i have nothing against like 
um, being able to to buy in-game um, cosmetics and and all that sort of stuff. Um, that doesn't that doesn't phase me at all because if you're the kind of person who who would do that, then you kind of you you kind of deserve that. Um, but if you're paying for for literal characters in the game, no, that's that's not that's not okay. Yeah, that's a bad. That, that really me. And that's that's kind of where League of Legends kind of got me off as well. Is I understand all the cosmetic stuff and paying for all of that stuff. I understand that you can you can really still unlock all of ca- all of the characters by playing the game. You have to play for hours. Like yeah, literal way too long <laughs> for you to to get every character in the game. You might as well just give everyone all of the characters and then do all of the additional cosmetic stuff because that's really where they're making their money anyway. They're not making as much money on the characters, so and why new, even bother? New characters when they came out, because I did play League of Legends for a time. I don't know if I've mentioned mm. this in the podcast before, but it's when new characters came out because the when their new release, they weren't actually... They were obviously testing that the abilities worked, mm. but they weren't testing how overpowered and broken they were to the current meta. Oh, yeah. They so, never did any like proper, proper balancing testing. They never... like they if they if they had a testing realm it was only ever for for making sure they actually worked and interacted correctly it was never for the character itself because there, there are there are testing realms there are definitely testing realms for league and i've seen a lot of people play play new characters and stuff on them and even then in those in those realms they're immediately identified as being way overpowered every single time but they never get rebalanced before they go back to go to live and it's like what's what was the point? <laughs> I think it's what part the of point? their. I think it's part of their business model to be broken. Yeah, that is. Brutally that is exactly. honest. Is that they? They know that there will be a bunch of people who just go out and buy, pay the the however much, like ten bucks or whatever it is, to buy the character in their skin, um, the, as soon as they're released, just so that they can win a few games until they get back, until they get patched out. Yeah, and that's it. And then the meta will just crush the character again, and you go back to waiting for the next character to come out. Exactly. Um, so we've talked about lots of money though (laughs) yeah we've talked about standouts uh we've talked about the gaming industry in general let's talk about the negatives of what's happening at the moment (laughs) um let's start back in the beginning of the year uh with that whole kojima issue and the game on everyone's lips is uh metal gear solid survival (laughs) personally um I think if you create an IP, it sh- should belong to you, even if you work for a company. So they can't ruin it um, after they get rid of you, because that game is not a Metal Gear su- Metal Gear game. It is literally like having to charge your person who's played a game ten extra dollars, ten extra dollars to have a second save spot is literally pulling down their pants and slapping them on the butt after they've thanked you for something. Yeah. It is, but it's the same sort of. It's, a, it's effectively the, the kind of model that we've been talking. About, you know, is is the 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 money making scheme. I mean, the thing about about but, IPs and all that sort of stuff. But is, you can only make money if your game's decent. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> sometimes whole, that's true. whole gameplay of carrying I mean, like cans of peas a, from one like side a of a map to the other. Yeah, but at least it like <laughs> caters to the actual premise. At least it's an actual game. Yeah, Metal Gear Survival is not a game. It's construct friggin' what corrugated iron fences and stab people through a wall through, with a pole. That is not a game. That is literally yeah. bought. It's, I would rather have my teeth pulled out personally because then at least to get something <laughs> at the end of it. Well, you know, they're not going to make any more money. I'm not going to make any more money from the video game. Um, they'll continue to make money from all the pachinko machines, but that's, yeah, that's you know, that's the other that's thing, beside the it? point. Um, you know, that's what happens when your company is literally owned by a gang um, and not by people who want to make money. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it happens. And honestly, I I think it's it's honestly better that it happened then um, and not like way later, because that means that, that Kojima has had time to work for with PlayStation <laughs> to make to make better games, a better game. Yeah, at least so. That's kind of messed up what we've seen already. So, we'll oh find out. my god, it's going to be amazing! <laughs> I can't wait for uh, Death Stranding to come out because that game, from what I've seen, looks balls to the wall fucked up, and that is what yeah. it's all about. Exactly. So uh, we'll we'll skip from January into November, and we'll talk about 
the controversy behind Fallout 76. I've personally not played it. Um, Fallout. I know some of- people who have. I know some people who have played it. I've seen some 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 less um, bandwagony um, reviews of it. From 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 what I can see, just not like yeah. From if we really back away from the bandwagon, um, and you just like just just real off the shelf, take a look at it. It looks pretty in a graphic sort of way. Um, if you were, um, if you did have three other people who want to play it with you at all times, I don't see it being a real big problem other than obviously all the bugs, but that's kind of Bethesda's game plan, you know, is just throw it out with all the bugs and let the community fix it. So I I don't know what anyone, I don't know what people were expecting that, but, um, yeah, it's, the the real kind of kicker for me when it comes to seventy six is I don't I don't understand at what point they thought their um, their demographic was because their demographic's not multiplayer they had enough backlash from Elder Scrolls on I don't I don't understand how they could have thought that 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 was a good idea like yeah it's an it's an interesting interesting thing but that's not even the most like crazy thing that's happened this year when it comes to understanding your audience so (laughs) yeah the thing that i will we'll come back to what you just said uh momentarily (laughs) but the thing that i don't like about fallout 76 76 is the entire point of fallout games is the world is interesting because it's filled with people Mm. once you remove the people what have you got you've got weird monsters and no story yeah you've got collect quests yeah which and kill thing in this area kill quests which and it becomes an mmo yeah which it's i'd rather possible. play a more more grounded mmo um i well, think i'd rather play an mmo with um big titty anime girls but you know if, <laughs> if you're gonna play if you play something like that you'd at least give me something good to look at for like for the hours and hours i'd need to play it for to for it to be any cut level of enjoyment and that's basically it is that it be, it, from from every review standpoint that i've seen it's not just i hey, hate it's got lots of bugs is is always just it's just a grindy mmo i've basically just made an mmo and it's it's it it was kind of seen you could really see it coming honestly when it came down to it considering what they tried to do with elder scrolls online but i think it's i think it's better at least than elder scrolls online if they fix all the bugs I think that it would still be a, a, a it would be a better form of MMO in that sense, but they should at least slap that tag on it. It should be treated as an MMO. It shouldn't be treated as a Fallout game in any shape or form. The thing that bugs me, if we're going to talk about like business model, is yep. their lack of communication with the community. Oh yeah. Um, when people bought the two hundred dollar edition and they were showing a canvas bag and were given a cheap got- nylon one, and the response yeah. from the company was, "Oh, they were too expensive, so yeah. we're going to bring you this piece it's, of shit cheap one." Hang on a second. I think two hundred dollars for a collector's edition is too expensive. That's yeah, what I think. Pretty much. Especially if you're going to give nylon bags. Yeah. Because what else did it come with? Like, <laughs> oh, like jack a, shit else. A yeah. helmet and something else, but. Um, someone mentioned on Reddit, I don't remember which which um, sub it was on, but they were talking about, I remember when, you know, premium things, collector's editions actually gave you cool shit. Yeah. And he still, the person was had a photograph of him still wearing the, I think it was Modern Warfare 2 that came with the uh, night vision goggles. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember. I think it's like Fallout 4's um, special edition came with, like a fully functional pit boy right yeah, you put your phone in and you could yeah. actually play on your phone as a pit boy yeah 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 so i so think it's like where's what happened like a couple of years and they decided no 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 you don't need any of that shit you just need a, a nylon bag yeah and a, and a plastic <laughs> uh plastic form fit helmet that's poorly painted um Jesus Christ. it's just it's just bizarre it's almost like what are you doing what are you focusing who are you aiming at and they're sort of gone, ah, yeah. uh, shotgun approach, just like pepper everything, but not actually focus on one thing. Like the issue that I exactly. have is uh, the the PVP seems broken, which is why yeah. you have an MMO that has like, they should have either done well, PVE to, yeah. servers or PVP you don't servers. You have to fight though, from what I, from what I understand, is that if you, sh- you don't want to, to be fought, you can turn it off. 
Yeah, but so the whole point is, is it was ex- it was shown in the trailer. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. It is a. It's a. It's an interesting, real like case study when it comes down to it for for what were they thinking sort of stuff because there's a lot of bits in there, bits and pieces of it. They're like someone in the company definitely was trying to to turn it in the direction of actually being fallout and then the other part of the company was just like no we're trying to make an mmo um and it's yeah it's a real disconnect um just in that sense and a disconnect from their consumer base again because they don't they don't understand that that people who play elder scrolls and fallout are in there for a narrative story that's that's it that's what they're there for (laughs) they're there for a single player stuff if they wanted to make it multiplayer, then they should have gone the route of like Borderlands, where you can bring in a couple of people, and that's it. It shouldn't be massively online. It shouldn't have random people join you. It should be calling a friend, phone a f- phone a friend, you know, to answer the, the question. The only issue with that is, is apparently the loot doesn't actually level up depending on how many people play. Oh no, that's all grind. Yeah. So. So if me you uh the random guy whatever yeti jim james whatever it all bought it and been super excited and we go into there for you know first mission blah and we'll get we'll get nothing because it will have to divide the same amount of loot up four times exactly not four times as much loot it's like that doesn't make it doesn't encourage people to play together so one there's your whole mmo stick gone uh you can't shoot you have to let you shoot another player and they have to shoot you back and then you get a massive disadvantage as the antagonizer for pvp okay. um the random drop for legendary loot is broken and they'll have yep. to patch that and remove items from the game to continue because of there's shotguns in the game that can kill the last boss in one hit yeah yeah there's a whole lot of balancing issues there's a whole lot of general game issues and that is because also because their beta only lasted for like four hours um and they didn't really do any testing so it, it's it's again it's that it's that whole throw it over the line and just let the customers deal with it it's the the there's a kind of thing that happens in um in the it world that that me and random both work in um where developers developers will just make stuff and and expect um operations to deal with it it's that DevOps sort of thing that happens. Um, but uh, there is a, there's a, a new form of stuff um, coming out. Well, in New Zealand, it's, it's kind of everywhere else. Uh, people like Spotify and, and a bunch of other people use it, which is the, the real DevOps model, which is that your developers work with your operations to make a product that works for everybody, including your customers. And it seems like they don't got that. They don't, they don't have that. <laughs> You know, they just sort of they just sort of make things and expect it all to work, and it's like that's you end up with problems when you do that, and it shows. It really shows for them. So, yeah, that's seventy six. Um, the other the other big thing that yeah, happened, I was going to say let's um, let's move away from dragging yeah. that dragging that <laughs> the well other big dead thing horse. That happened, uh, <laughs> the other thing that happened around the same time actually um, is uh, is BlizzCon happened. Oh um, God, I'd completely forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, BlizzCon yeah, happened. Um, we'll, we'll cover that in a second. Um, some other things happened. They're going to remake um, Warcraft Three. Um, well, they are remaking Warcraft Three. Um, not necessarily like a. F- it's it's an interesting sort of thing. They're, they're calling it Reforged, and basically what that means for them is they're going to like. Uh, upgrade the current engine that runs for Warcraft 3 because there's still people who play it. They're upgrading that engine to allow for high level textures and everything and all that sort of cool stuff that comes with a remake. Yeah. So that people who currently own the classic version can play with people who own the reforged version. Oh, that's good. That's actually nice that's stuff. actually a decent decent thing. I know, right? Actually, pretty do. cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff that they're actually doing on that end because it's a ba- basically because it's a bunch of fans who are working on it yeah. within the company. So it's like I see, I, I completely understand now um, that it's it's literally just nerd fans. And what else could what else could um, uh, Warcraft Three, you know, s- fantastic uh, strategy game have as fans as, as complete nerds who uh, who just want to code and fix it? Um, so that's that's a really cool thing that came out of that. Um, 
the other side of the coin. The other, <laughs> the other stuff they did um, was uh, was they uh, decided to um, to uh, to only announce the the mobile Diablo that they're bringing out, um, which they're not even really developing themselves, um, but are still deciding to to uh, announce at BlizzCon um, only on only on the mobile um, and basically garbage. And they announced it to a big crowd of people who are expecting, you know, good big Diablo release. And it was not well received. And I'm sure everyone, <laughs> is, I'm sure everyone who's, who's hearing this remembers this very clearly. But uh, we obviously, taking like a back look at it now, because you know, it was like last month that this happened. It's it is again just the the not reading, not <laughs> not reading your audience is enough. But the fact that they couldn't even read the room sort yeah. of stuff you know like you got a whole bunch of people in there um you know you go, you go up on stage and you say it's only for mobile and no one cheers no one claps everyone it's kind of even a little bit of a booing going on yeah and then your reaction isn't to go back to your isn't to call somebody and say hey, hey can you just play the the video for something else <laughs> yeah. like just just show something else quickly <laughs> like it's to say don't you guys have phones yeah what is that <laughs> yeah just it's just a simple reading of the room you know if if everyone is 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 absolutely not enjoying what you're what you're feeding try feeding them something else yeah especially considering that they are absolutely working on another pc diablo they are doing that they just didn't announce it at at blizzcon and it's like just just quickly <laughs> just anything just get get like the studio director to like just just come on stage and be like it's okay guys we're gonna do a pc version but not of this it's fine yeah <laughs> calm down <laughs> like, <laughs> put down the pitchforks and the torches it's gonna be okay yeah but no they just let it happen they just let they let it happen and they let q a happen they let q a happen that's bad they let people come up and ask questions about it and they didn't expect to get roasted and they, <laughs> and they did oh like a small yeah um the that was, go- yeah <laughs> yeah that's it's it's bad news when you when you wrote your own thing when your own your own community and you get everyone along and you go hey guys look at this thing and, and they're goes, like, no, like we don't want that. And uh, yeah. as as I was talking to Random yesterday, uh, he came over to my house because he was having a bad day. And mm. um, I'm the perfect shoulder to cry on, ladies. Oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, his phone died. And I was literally like, are you going to get a razor so you can play Diablo? And he just looked at me and was like, <laughs> no, no, don't even, don't even talk to me about that. It's just like, it's, it. it's, it's perfect because this whole concept of gaming phones like a phone designed for gaming it's like just make him friggin portable portable gaming console make a third party yeah. one that you can put like indie games on well that's exactly it though is that if the, the thing is that the phone that they can absolutely turn a phone into a into a gaming console and i don't the 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 issue is how they're going about it is is the main issue touch screens are not the way they're no, hundred percent. Because half your, especially with people with big hands, yeah, like my it's hands not, are quite not. skeletal. Um, yeah. because I'm a I'm a skinny guy, versus yeah. Random's hands, which are like huge, like Marv Marv from Sin City, like strangle people <laughs> to death hands. Exactly, like like uh, um, like kingpin hands. You know? Yeah, like you put like, you put like, your like and slam a slam a door and like and crush their skull and the sort of stuff. Yeah. Um. And if you put yeah. your big fat thumbs on a screen, that's like ninety percent of the screen yeah. covered. Exactly. So touchscreens, touchscreens will never be good enough for for that kind of game. Obviously, there are there are some games that can work in that way, namely like strategy games, um, not real time strategy games. Strategy games. <laughs> um, you listening, EA? No real time strategy games on the fucking phone. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, things like Farmville uh puzzle games like just just that sort of stuff that's fine you can I, have that on the, on the personally phone. personally it's i fine. see what pokemon go showed us is that do, everybody has phones thank you blizzard <laughs> um and secondly they don't want to sit in, in a corner plugged into a powerpoint um 
playing online with Wi-Fi with people. No. Like, they'd you rather be out in public. And that's, I think, um, that zombie game that's based similarly related to Walking Dead might have worked if it had been on the hype mm. train before the series sort of petered out into nothing. Um, yeah. I think, I think if, I if they like... released it before the series kind of went down the toilet, like when everyone was still yeah. super hype and everyone was still talking about The Walking Dead, like you wouldn't walk into an office, into a lunchroom, and they'd be like, did you see the last episode of Walking Dead? Because no one gives a shit about it anymore. No, it's kind of been over for a while. But It's been over for a long yeah. damn while. Yeah, but the... Yeah, the thing, I, I don't like the Go model. I never liked it, like, at all. So the the people who developed Pokemon Go um, wasn't the Pokemon company, if you didn't know that already. Um, they developed another sort of similar game um, that was about um, aliens, effectively. That was hacking into firewalls and servers and stuff, eh? Yeah. Yeah, because was, um, was my um, old flatmates used to play it. Yeah, but it had the same sort of deal. You go, you walk around and you find things and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, that's that's fine for a certain type of people, for, for a specific demographic of people. That's fine. They can have their, their sort of games, but there's no way that you're going to, like, corner the market on those sort of games ever because um, it's just, there's, there's, it's a, that's the only demographic of people. Like, you, you kind of burst your bridges with the Pokemon Go stuff because everyone who loves Pokemon kind of got in on that and now yeah. they all realize that they don't like playing that sort of game. So it's not going to happen. Yeah, everyone just loves um, Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. Everyone loves Pokemon, which is fine. That's, just make Pokemon for everything. It's, it's all good. Pokemon real-time strategy, just do it. Anyway, um, it's it should be, if you've got something that you want people to be playing on like their phone or something like that, you need to be able to... to to easily make something that goes on the phone that makes it more tactile yeah so um i've got a thing that allows me to connect my ds4 up not necessarily obviously i can connect it via bluetooth but i mean like just like hold a ds4 and my phone by itself it's um who made it nico somebody um which is perfect it's it's exactly what you need basically it's just something to attach something you've already got to your phone so that you can play exactly like that. And unfortunately, I don't think it works with, um, I don't think I managed to get it working with um, PS4 Remote Play, but it worked perfectly fine with um, PlayStation emulators on my phone. So in that vein is where we should be going, is where we should be heading. We should be giving people the peripheral that allows their phone, any size, shape, or kind of phone to play any shape form kind of game you know yeah um, that would we we that had would that break. we had that years ago with a certain pokemon didn't you get like a, a step counter with one of the games and you clipped to your bells and like did your day and that's how you like you put a pokemon in it before you went like away to yeah. school uh, or whatever the, the 3ds the 3ds there was that. the 3ds yeah um i think the i think the advance had something similar as well um actually can't remember but yeah I mean that's 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 also fine. The whole like um, alt, alternative reality sort of stuff um, that's fine too. Um, but that's that only works for certain types of games. I'm talking like something that could work for any game ever. So having something that having an easy having a console that's not really a console, but just a thing that you buy that connects to your phone and connects to any type of phone and allows your phone to to play any kind of game. That's that would kind of that would kind of go crazy i think so your, your phone becomes a screen rather than the uh actual everything yeah kind of obviously it would try to use what your what your phone's capable of as well like to back up stuff or to like have saves or whatever on it obviously you would probably limit it to a certain level of phone so certain like not so good phones would not like die every time you try to play a game but i think that would be that would be great and you could obviously like also sell it with as a bundle with other phones that are capable of supporting certain things. Like Razer would would obviously be the the big star of this, where they'd just be like, "Yeah, we're selling our phones with this with this thing as well," and it also like adds a bunch of like performance stuff on there, and you can play things that you know, at you know, fucking four K at sixty frames a second on your phone for no reason. Cool, thanks Razer. <laughs> it also. Does chroma colors? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Is there anything? Is there anything? Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll we'll finish there because there's you're sort of bordering on on my my intellect of uh, <laughs> knowing what the hell is going on. Um, you have joined us on the VR Master Race, and yes. I would have VR for my PC if I had the space, which I physically don't because you actually mm-hmm. do need space for that. You do. Um, is there anything you're looking forward to from new technology wise with with um, VR? Because I I think hopefully hopefully fingers crossed mm-hmm. they move away from the camera and the light balls for uh, the next variant of the PS VR. Yeah, um, with with PS5, you know, rumored, it hasn't been fully announced yet, but it's rumored. No, well, um, there's always going to be rumors for it. I don't think that they're going to announce it for a while, but we won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, we won't get into that. that that'll be a podcast uh, episode something or other in yeah. two years' time. Oh my God, guys! It's, it's the finally has been released. Um, <laughs> we've got the first pictures, and and we've finally got Final Fantasy VII. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> um i think they need to move into the 3d tracking uh yeah. i think they need to have gyroscopes in the controllers yeah and well, they do. What are you talking about? yeah but i mean like on the level that they have them with uh the vive yeah. or oculus that sort of thing i did like the cross play um aspect 100 mm. percent. i think sony were fantastic when they did that because I was playing bridge crew with somebody and I was like, how the hell are you doing that? Cause he was just pointing one finger and I was like, how yeah. are you doing that? And he's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, just clicking like each of his fingers up. And I'm like, how the hell are you doing that? And I'm like clicking the same button and then my hands is opening and closing. And he's like, Oh, I'm on the, I'm on whatever it was. Oculus. I'm on the five. <laughs> I'm on the five. And I was like, this has cross play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, where people are like, Oh, Sony doesn't do cross play. It's like, no, 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 they don't do cross play where they can't control what's the other person's doing because there was a lot of a lot of the issues with especially streamers who are playing grand theft auto uh online on pc yeah because they got mods and all that sort of stuff oh my god there's craziness there's craziness that goes along with that exactly so and and you'd it'd suck being like a high level player and streaming and making your money out of it and then you're getting your account banned because someone was hacking in your server and you receive yeah. something that was hacked and it ended up you know that's and that's yeah, what exactly. people give sony grief because it's like oh you just won't do cross play because oh but xbox yeah. and windows yeah. will do it. it's like yeah xbox and windows are yeah you know they're owned by the same people they're owned um, by the same people so they trust um, each themselves so they're for yeah. each other where sony's exactly. just a bit like well hang on back off guys like i have no control over guys. what the input and ac- output from you guys is so i'm not going to trust it yeah no. um Earth Defense Force 5 is out, by the way. I'm it is. It is indeed. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, EDF. 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 Um, I might have to just buy that. Uh, <laughs> just right now. Just do it. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, that's that's really the the gist of games this year. Is, is We've had our ups. We've had our downs. <laughs> we've had narrative had story. Some, uh, We've proved to the uh, AAA market that, guess what? We actually want single-player games, guys. Mm. That is the truth. Not yeah, everyone has why, Not everyone has uh, the time. Yep, that's why uh, uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Why Red Dead Redemption sold so well. Why all these other games have sold very, very well. Detroit um, Become Human. Yep. Um, and why, yeah, basically. God of War. And which, just... Just look at the Witcher stuff already. It's kind of already been. So- just don't want to accept it. Basically, um, that single player games really do work, and VR is really working. And I can't wait for my Xbox to get it. They don't even yeah. sell the camera anymore. <laughs> no, they don't. I don't even think they manufacture it anymore. No, they'll have to. They'll have to just kind of try and port the Vive or whatever to it. Basically. That'll be the only way they can do it. Ooh, that's it's gonna be interesting. It's going to be expensive as hell. Though. The world's most powerful console. Yeah. <laughs> With no exclusives. Hell yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, we'll focus now for, for the folks at home on VR because it has become a huge part of my life and something I always wanted ever since mm-hmm. I saw, you know, movies as a child with, you know, some form of VR or AR um standouts to me have been obviously 
Firewall. Firewall was fantastic. The only issue with Firewall is, is the updates were very far apart. It sold really well. They should have taken their money and instantly been like, cool, here's DLC. Versus mm. what they did, which was like, here has cosmetics. And everyone was just like, what the fuck? I don't want, I don't want well, to paint my character. But everyone mainly bought, for them, them, bought it anyway. Yeah, mainly for them, it was because they didn't expect it to sell so well. They never even come close to expecting how much that was going to come back for them. So I think they never had plans for, and I for think what s- would happen in that case. They just like didn't, they didn't realize Sony it would did, be. Sony were bros about that as well. They were like, oh, yeah. I'll help you. Exactly. So I think it'll get better. Um, I hope it gets better before there's more competition, but maybe not. Yeah, because um, um, what was Random saying? He was saying there was another one that was supposed to be a competitor and he played the alpha <laughs> of it or the beta of it and it just like was crap and he was just like, nah, Firewall's still better. So I did like a two not stars sure. out of five. Not sure. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But yeah, competitive shooters in VR will absolutely become crazy good soon. What's like, what's the one that's on PC that's dominating? Uh, pa- pa- Parlov? 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 Is it Parlov? Not sure. Um, I have no idea. I'll have a look. Um, <laughs> anything anything you've played in VR this year that's really stood out for being a better experience because it's VR? Well, obviously, um, Skyrim. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's yeah. just a, it's the perfect, it's the perfect, I w- uh, it's the perfect way to show how VR can improve the experience because being able to be actually present just it just changes so much the game that you don't even realize when you when you when you when you really think about it like like you you know you can say like oh i played skyrim on on, on everything i played it on the switch i played it on the cheesecake i played it every fine it's, it's I, it's i'm not gonna phone. change my idea yeah i'm not gonna change my ideas about it and then you play it in vr and you're like oh yeah this game okay. is, actually, <laughs> is actually like worth playing again yeah it's like this is actually worth playing again just for this experience it's there's this yeah the vr has just adds so much more depth to something just just you can't you can't really put your finger on it it because it it literally does actually give you an extra dimension to play with and it's it's that much more for that obviously there's some some bits and pieces of skyrim that don't work quite because of it um because they didn't they didn't put nearly enough work into making it proper vr port but yeah they did a good job for what they did um but obviously swords and shield stuff doesn't quite work very well but the magic system fantastic 10 out of 10 oh yeah of hell yeah <laughs> like that's running, just, just there's just something about that like <laughs> running around feeling like uh darth sidious was amazing exactly like, just being a god is in, yeah. and 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 Sh- two hand aiming, yeah. two hand aiming, best, best thing ever. And being able to like um, take out two enemies at the same time with two different spells is fantastic. Exactly, it's so it's yeah, it's so good. It, it isn't just just that's it. <laughs> like, and because you've played it before, you you can you can really understand the depth of change that is there. Obviously, because I played it on the PlayStation, it wasn't like there's no mods and stuff. But yeah, once I can, once I've once I got more money, um. And graphics card then i'm gonna get a vive um and absolutely i'm gonna play it on the on the pc um so i can add mods to it and that'll be a whole a whole plethora of things that'll change for that and also probably um fallout 4 as well in vr and i'll probably even look at the modding community for vr in new vegas and three as well so there's all that stuff speaking of that have you seen the company the what uh Sidian? oblivion obsidian mm-hmm. obsidian uh, obsidian yeah yes. their new trailer for that new yes. game and it looks like fallout in space and i was just like they only know yeah. how to make one type of game and this might actually be interesting and worth buying and and that's why uh it's kind of funny that uh that bethesda just let them go yeah good job bethesda anyway yeah vr vr adds so much more depth um and yeah I wasn't a big fan of Tetris in VR. I don't think it added that much more to Tetris. Um, but every like games that actually it does add a dimension to, absolutely. Um, so you know, just um, just keep talking and nobody explodes as well. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, just, we you know, we need to do a day of that. At yeah, Random's it's house. it's such a being only having that visible. And only being in that room, just and cutting yourself off. On, 
communication yeah. from your friends. Yeah, exactly. It gives it it gives you the kind of immersion you could only hope to to dream about with a screen. Like, yeah, you would yeah. never get that immersed. And it yeah, it just gives so much more. So just port everything to it. Every first person shooter, put them all in there. <laughs> It was uh, Pavlov. Except for Half-Life. Don't do that. <laughs> it was Pavlov, the game that I was talking about, and it is basically Counter Strike in VR. Um, okay. So we played Firewall this year. We played uh, Arizona Sunshine. Mm. Uh, that came out a while ago, though. Yeah, uh, but I'm saying we 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 played it as a channel. We played it uh, together, mm. and I th- I love it. I have way too many way too many vr games now um i don't have mm. keep talking and no one explodes because obviously i don't have any play, people to play with but i do have a, <laughs> I, have, I have no friends <laughs> well you know you, <laughs> you put one person in my bedroom and it's like over rover um yeah i'm oh, sorry sorry fourth wall breaking my recording studio um <laughs> i expect you to die is fantastic and that is everything i've ever wanted in a spy game because it is just so mm. ridiculous um yeah. <laughs> have you played that you play no. have, you, have you seen this? Have you seen this? <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen it. Yeah. Fantastic game. I obviously have been ruining my body playing Creed. Yeah. Um, and Beat Saber. And Beat Saber. Two new. Uh, we played Rigs. That was fun. Mm. I thoroughly enjoyed really Rigs. I feel like Rigs needs some work, but otherwise, it, uh, yeah, the, that's what really sold me for the whole first person shooter in a in a vr scenario because that's just all you need to do is just make it make the story elements allow for your perspective in that way you know so even though at a place for the playstation you have to you can't really move around too much unless you've got a good view with the camera yeah it's perfect because you don't actually have to you don't have to move around that much you you, you're literally sitting in a mech suit so why would you (laughs) like and it works it's really good um but obviously there's just there was never anybody playing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the if, if i was going to take that model of game and add it to another ip and print money it would be zoids a hundred percent or yeah because i've seen some mech warrior games but mm. i think if you got the brand of zoids behind and the pre-established zoids mm. i think the game would be absolutely mine like that'd be a, that'd be a killer for a year i reckon absolutely if you got any sort of any of the Gundam um, genre just in there, people would eat that shit up. Yeah. Especially if 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 like they made like man, if if they made a Evangelion oh VR my game, God. it would it would break the bank in Japan and overseas. <laughs> <laughs> it really would, and there would be there would be countless countless people wanting to mod the shit out of it to make. You know what happens, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would, yeah. It's a bit. It, it would. It would be too much. I think. I think that would be the point where humanity would never recover. <laughs> um, but I still want it. I still want it to happen so much. <laughs> yeah. the The interesting one for me would be where the future's going. Um, everyone was thought it was going to be like a one off, like how to beat Xbox at their own game. Mm. But I don't think that personally i don't think that's gonna gonna be the actual way we're going i really oh. believe that this is going to be one of those things that when developers go to sony and go cool can we have technology to build games around they'll be like yeah cool here's everything you need to go back a vr game now you know yeah. come back and come back in well, nine months and and we'll sell it for you yeah the thing is that if you've got if you if your main plan is is um first person shooter if that's your you you just do where you want to go then there's no reason why you can't make it also vr capable because the only thing that you're really changing is how many cameras there are for the for the person and if you really want to you can also add in arm movement you don't even have to add that in if you don't want to you can still just have it as a controller it doesn't really take too much away from you but having the moves or the vive controllers or whatever does add a little bit more to it but you know no big loss if it's a first person shooter We've been used to playing around with controllers the whole time before, so why would it be any different now? Like, yeah. So I still like the whole yeah. concept of having con- like two controllers for a shooter, for the fact that you have to physically reach down and like reload. Yeah, absolutely. 
I absolutely think that like that's that adds a whole level of realism. But I think that's that doesn't have to be in a game, especially if you're going for like more of a fantasy FPS sort of stuff. Yeah. If you just want to go, if you want to go like real realism, and I think that they should absolutely make like a like a too realistic shooter, like something that's far too realistic in VR. That would actually be hilariously fantastic if they did that. Um, but I don't think it's quite there yet. Um, but eventually, yes, absolutely. Um, making something that's that's overtly realistic in VR would would probably break some people, um, especially if it's like got like realistic like human physics as oh, well. Just, like you're chopping thinking, people's legs off. And yeah, stuff. I was just yes. thinking like <laughs> <laughs> Counter Strike mixed with mixed with Gorn, mixed with like, like, like jibbing. And yeah, just like, like the shooting, and everything. yeah, just, shooting yeah. someone and their leg pops off when they fall down. They're like screaming on the yeah. ground, and the person like is still yeah. inside that. Body. And they like yeah, they're still inside that person with their like, leg cut off, like looking at their stump of an arm, like oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then like being able to actually like pull out a bandage and actually wrap up that arm or whatever, and yeah. then like not being able to use that controller from now on, <laughs> and seeing that blue ghost of their hand where there, where it is, like that would be, that would be two next level, and I want it. <laughs> I want it so bad. Some other some other things that I'd really love would be a horror game in VR that is the monster can hear you. So you'd have to have the microphone engaged. Oh, the microphone would have to stay on. The microphone would have to stay on. If you screened, the monster would know where you are. So it would have to yeah. like rely on that whole like covering your own hand over your mouth and being like... <sighs> I think yeah. that would be a friggin' well done. And I think... I, I, I was disappointed things. that Aliens didn't get a port to the PSVR, the Alien game. Yeah. Um, there is a new one coming, so yeah. fingers crossed. We'll see. Hopefully, please. Um, yeah. They're still made by Sega, aren't they? The last one was made by Sega. I think so. I think they're still Sega. Yeah. So, uh, they could be could be paid for by Sony. Anyway. Paid for by Sony. There's nothing else I can really see on the list of standout. Um, not a huge like. We'll just go through December now. Um, obviously, I'm buying. I'm not interested in Borderlands Two. Um, not until they put um, multiplayer in it. Yeah, uh, Earth Defense Force Five. I'm literally going to buy this one as soon as we're done recording. Playgrounds mm-hmm. unknown. Uh, I remember Jim Jams <laughs> approaching the group and being like, "Hey guys, you getting this?" And it was sort of like, mm, "I kind of already own it on PC, and I don't really enjoy it." Um, I think yeah. it was either my time zone was gimping me, or us, as in Kiwis or Australians oh, yeah. or whatever. All, all the time. We always get, we always just get um, gimped when it comes to multiplayer games like that. There were bugger all servers. Um, yeah. I think next week I will be streaming Subnautica unless the... No, even if, if online comes out, if I don't, because there's no release date for that yet. I think mm. Subnautica is going to be my thing because uh, we got massive copyright strike for all the copyrighted music in Creed. Mm. because that's what happens when you don't have a large youtube channel yeah thanks and we'll, guys you probably get the same thing for um, beat saber as well oh yeah 100 percent. it's gonna just be like cool every song you played is copyrighted and you're mm. like yeah i know copyrighted this is a game i'm goddamn playing yeah i wonder if we should um i wonder if we should play path of exile oh. new zealand made game that was um it's a clone of diablo we've got a phone right <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's on the ps4 path of <laughs> exile I don't know. Maybe you should contact the um, <laughs> contact the owner. <laughs> contact the owners. Yeah, be like, hey, we're, we're Kiwi, Kiwi streamers. We want to like give us cool stuff. And we'll well, it was free on the on the on the PC. So I wonder about the PlayStation. This looks complicated. It's just a it's just a Diablo clone. It's not that complicated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, when you said Diablo clone, for some reason I thought um, Delta. D- d- uh, dota dota clone <laughs> i see no yeah no it's not it's very much just a diablo clone it does have a um have an interesting um ability selection screen but that's about it i think the thing that'll probably get us the most annoyed about it is all of the new zealand kiwi accents that are voicing everybody yeah um, <laughs> but i think it'll be fun for us to play it um at least like once yeah it might go to a uh New Zealand themed water park in the States and they're like <laughs> Kia ora and g'day and welcome to and it was just like he's like g'day's actually Australian and they're like nobody knows except you bro so just get in the water slide and shut up and he was like oh. <laughs> that's pretty great yeah that's pretty great. 
but it was it was interesting because there was a lot of like Kiwiana used in names of things which he thought was really cool like it was a photo of like uh it was something to do i think it was like kai something for the food court and something like that hell yeah pies yeah but i think they were doing like more of australian menu so there was a lot of like uh, overcooked seafood so. <laughs> yep that's yep yeah because you don't actually want to barbecue seafood folks that's not the best idea you can't heat control you can't time control it's it's not uh-huh. a good idea no 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 Unless you're in the wilderness, like I, uh, to, oh, yeah. to, Obviously. to segue I need a sterling. off a cliff like backwards. Just instead of, um... To segue off anyway, a cliff backwards. Yeah, instead of talking about games, we're talking about fish now. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I think we should. I think we should look at playing, um, Bath of Exile. So Maybe. Um, obviously, if we can do, um, Earth Defense Force would obviously be good as well. Yeah, um, it did come out on PS4. It did. Free to play action role playing game developed by Grind Gears Games. Is it, is it free on PlayStation 4? Uh, uh, PlayStation 4 version is scheduled for February. What? Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> they must have got hell back then. Yeah. So, yeah, it was Defense Force for Christmas. Uh-huh. Um, I see that DayZ's been released. Officially, <laughs> that's dumb. Good stuff. Yeah. Good job, Daisy. You finally got there. I don't. I don't know if they've actually added the things that were considering. in the mod. Yeah, considering that the um, the other clone, uh, Battlegrounds, is already out on one PlayStation and oh, H H one N one. Ah, too many, too many of those. Too many of those. Fortnite. But- it all comes back down to foot. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just the battle royale as a genre it doesn't appeal to me. Um, no. The concept of starting again every single time. Mm. I do like the concept of like, oh, you die, cold bad luck. Next, like, just jump out, jump into a new game. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm sort of still at that point. Like, I was, I was watching Scott Chambers yesterday. Uh, well, I say mm. yesterday was actually early this morning, mm. and he was playing uh, the new. The new EA, EA Call of uh, Duty game, um, Battlefield yeah. Five, and I basically said, you know, I love the series, but at the same time, I refuse to give EA any more money yeah. until they learn from their mistakes. Because mm. the only way you can hurt developers is with it with your wallet by saying yeah. no. Exactly. And I think people will learn, but it will take a couple of you know, it'll take a couple of years of going no, and. It'll, take us as a community as a gaming community folks you out there at home to stop <laughs> falling for the six month bloody retconned short term memory loss hey this company effed me over and took my 100 and well in New Zealand it's 100 and whatever 110 for a new game unless you yeah. buy like pre-order it with a, like a discount and then yeah. coming back to the same developer who's going to make the exact same game in the exact same genre and do the exact same thing to you and being like cool I'm Ooh. going to give you more money it's like no don't do it the whole concept of not pre-ordering games is it's interesting too. You know, a yeah. lot of people don't don't agree with pre-order. I don't. It's like, I, why would you give a company money before the game's released? Yeah, I don't know. In some circumstances, there are some people. I, there are some companies that I trust. You know, yeah, I, I trust Rockstar. I trusted. Um, what else did I pre-order this year? Oh, I've kept, obviously, I pre-ordered uh, Monster Hunter World. That was pretty damn obvious. Uh, I pre-ordered. Um, what else did I pre-order? I'm pretty sure I pre-ordered... Oh, yeah, I pre-ordered um, Become... Uh, Detroit. Well, yeah, uh, obviously. Because uh, I trust that that developer, mm. which I can't remember yeah. the name of off the top of my head now. Uh, scrolling mm, through... Case. Scrolling through the year. Yeah. Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2 were ported onto the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> the then they threw it. Um, yeah. yeah. Pre-ordered um, Cyberpunk... Uh, when is the release early for that? It's next year sometime. Um, I pre-ordered it from, from Mighty Ape, so <laughs> just whenever it happens, really. Yeah, because I've, um, I've got a pre-order for Days Gone coming, and that got mm. pushed back from February till... I think it's like... I think it was August now, to be brutally honest. Mm. Probably. That's... Yeah. They've, you know, these games are getting better, so it takes longer for them to make. It's just... Which is how it happens. It'll be interesting to see what we are up to when the next generation of consoles comes out to be mm. really honest like because there was a lot of games that kind of got gimped 
you know, that last sort of little end bit where they were being, they were still releasing PS3 games when the PS4 was out. Mm. Because, you know, companies yeah. are just like, cool, hope you haven't bought the new console and traded your old one because here's our brand new game and there's no crossover. Yeah, that was, that was a problem with the no crossover stuff. But the next one would definitely, would, I uh, yeah, if it doesn't, if the PS5 does not have cross, does not have its backwards compatibility, then I won't, I probably won't be buying a PS5 until, uh, until way late, <laughs> basically. Like, I just hope that it's sort of similar to when you get Steam and you just, if, you know, if you buy a new computer, you can still download hmm. the games from it. Um, I think the game well, yeah. on- will just connect up to your, to your thing. But this is what I'm saying is like, if, if they don't have actual backwards compatibility, so it can't play older games, then yeah, I'm not probably not going to buy it for a while. <laughs> like, there's no point because <laughs> there's probably no like brand new games that'll go on to it that I'll really care about for a while anyway. So, and they need to learn. Yeah, pay with you know, make decisions with your money, people. It's interesting because so, yeah. there's a lot of spinoff at the moment as well. Um, if we're going to take a take a step back from the actual industry and mm-hmm. the the product of the industry. What's your feelings relating to the Witcher TV show? Um, because I know for a I, fact it's based on the box, not the not the games. But well, yeah, I mean, how would you base it on the games? Yeah, <laughs> but most people <laughs> make, make make everyone. I lost you there for a second. End of it. But, so, if if you were basing the TV show off the games, then uh, what would you do? Would you just uh, make everyone phone in at the end of the, of the episode? <laughs> Be like, and you decide what happens next. Decide what Geralt does. Does he kill the beast? Or does he kill the man? Yeah. Do you hit like, square to have sex with her, or do you press circle <laughs> to play Gwent? Everyone's just mashing circle. Yeah, everyone's just everyone. Just every single episode is just him getting drunk and playing Gwent. Yeah. 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 Best TV show, two thousand and ten. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, obviously it has to be off the books. Um, I mean, yeah, that's just it. Um, I think that's perfectly fine. I feel like that's probably a. It's a really, really good. It work perfectly. I'm way, I'm way happier about it being a TV show than I am about it being a book. About it being sorry, about it being a movie, uh, because basically my deal with movies these days is always that uh, is that the book is better, <laughs> and it's just like. Come on, guys. So you should have. Um, and they're just having having a TV show obviously gives you a lot more time to work with. You know, you'll yeah. be able to develop the story better in a TV show since because books are way too long, you know, especially those ones. <laughs> yeah. If, if we're going to go with that, um, the thing talking of zombies in the genre, um, Oof. World War Z <laughs> really hurt me, like really actually hurt me because it is, believe it or not, I'm walking on here. My favorite book of all time. Fair enough. Um, I mean, I, I, and it I should have like, been an HBO miniseries, you know, like I mean, five or I'm six episodes. Them. Zombies is a genre. Zombie. Yeah. Zombies is a genre. Yeah. I'm just really over them. Um, I mean, I love the, I love zombies. I love the idea of them. I, I would, I would flourish in a zombie apocalypse, but <laughs> seeing it in every single media, all the time and most of them not being particularly good kind of just gets me like yeah you know like i've gone back and recently watched you now night of the dead and um and the original um george romero zombie stuff and that still holds up because it's yeah. not it, it's it's good <laughs> it's actually good whereas like a lot of that stuff hasn't really been good you know go back and watch um zombie land is still good um Shaun of the Dead is still good because it is a piss take. It takes the, the the formula and and flips it around and stuff. But pretty much everything else that was just like bland remakes or just like re editions, just 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 no, it's too much. Like yeah, it's too much. So zombies, no, 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 no. Middle Gear survive, no, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> the for me. Um, I've always wanted to do a it's April Days Gone's in April by the way I've always wanted to do a side by side comparison because now we're segueing um, of the Dawn of the Dead versus the I think it was Zack Schneider I'll link, let's just look that up um, Dawn of mm. the Dead Hang on. I think it was Zack Schneider 2004 film yeah it was Zack Schneider that did it Yeah, that movie um, was actually alright 
it'd be an interesting for a comparison because but it was like one of his like original movies right yeah um yeah, this was back when he actually like gave a shit gave a shit <laughs> it was his first movie it was his first as no. director directorial yep. debut and then he made yeah, 300 watchmen and then everything yeah, else he gave was a garbage shit about off that yeah. He gave a shit about those three movies and he stopped giving a shit. Yeah. Well, here's, here's a problem with Sucker Punch, which was the beginning of his downfall. He was director, producer, and writer. Yeah. You should never... never yeah. Like w- people should have learned from uh, George Lucas not to give people mm-hmm. that much power because then that <laughs> just ends up in garbage. <laughs> uh, Pretty much. Yeah. And that's that's your uh, Fano podcast bingo is when we bring up Star Wars and yeah. Game of Thrones. Stop now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. If we're going to make a segue, do we want to make a segue into TV shows? So we want to, uh, it's it, bro. This is free form. We were like, free form? last, free form. Okay. last week it was literally like I mentioned a subject and brought it in when we were like done with whatever the hell we were talking about. I, I really go, go to, as long as it's not, you know, going to get a, get us in prison. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> of course. Of course. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's just, <laughs> The whole thing um <laughs> there's been some yeah there's been some interesting choices when it comes to um to to movies and stuff it's particularly around Zack snyder um yeah i feel like i feel like the dc franchise um really needs to to change completely <laughs> for basically pe- for people playing at home you can also stamp on the uh fun of <laughs> <laughs> for the uh yep. shitting on dc the cinematic yep, universe DC. yeah that's that's just constantly gonna happen i mean if you've got your doctor who bingo i'm sorry it's just not gonna it's not gonna happen today though um yeah. anyway um yeah the the thing uh, for me specifically now that disney are pulling all of their um their netflix uh, Marvel shows because uh, they're making their own streaming surface. It's not because the, yeah, it's not because the shows yeah. are cancelled. It's not because they're not doing well. It's because they want to make their own cheddar. Exactly. They're buying a dairy farm so they can make their own cheddar. It's a, it's yeah. a simple fact. Pretty they don't much. need any more um, cheddar, personally. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so, they yeah, need. They're going to do that. So what I think DC should do in that void is um, is net, let Netflix buy their shit instead, and let Netflix make really good dc shows would they um, though because yes yeah, they absolutely would they absolutely would especially if they use the real justice if they didn't fuck around with green hour and whatever bullshit they've gone over there if they gave them the justice league yes they absolutely would they absolutely would <laughs> so we're saying you're saying and i'm i'm on i'm on, I'm on board on the tandem segue here yeah if you're saying that they had a justice league tv show where it was like original Justice League with the five five members, mm-hmm. and starting from the beginning with no other canon existing, yep. I'm a hundred percent behind that shit. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, Especially I mean, what would actually be what would actually be really cool if they went with like <clears throat> they went a bit further than that and didn't just straight up say, um, "This is brand new canon starting from the beginning" or whatever, but they start with. Um, the flip flashpoint paradox but like right in the middle of it so the first episode is is flash part way through the flashpoint paradox where he's corrected everything so he's aware of the previous universe but none of the other characters are and that's like the first arc of the whole show is everybody else um and basically do like do a justice league series that's just just split off into each individual person having their own proper saga and i think that would be fantastic and then like they meet back up so you're doing defenders backwards basically basically but like in a basically i'm thinking like the the marvel movie phase phases system um so you're starting with avengers justice league yeah but just justice league um and a tv show format and you start with avengers yeah especially considering no one cares anymore fucking doing backstory bullshit yeah, I'm. I'm actually need to, to be brutally tired. I'm a hundred percent tired of every Batman movie starting off with. Everyone knows <laughs> how Batman. Deed. Everybody <laughs> fucking knows. Everybody. If yeah. you don't know who Batman is, why are you in a watching a Batman show? Like honestly, like look up exactly. Batman. Just Google Batman. Why, why are you watching Gotham? Like, why do you care? Yeah, 
Goth- oh, it's called Goth- Gotham. You wouldn't yeah. know. Yeah. Like, if you're watching Gotham, if you if you know that it's called Gotham, Batman, you know why. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean Gotham's Gotham's fan. Gotham's fine. It's a good good show, but the same. Didn't oh, what stuff. they did with the Joker is <laughs> a bit dumb though. Ah, uh, they they break, they didn't actually do that. So. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm saying. Is like they if if Netflix if they gave Netflix control of DC shows like that. I think we would get some some real quality shit, um, especially if they got um, Constantine as well, um, and if um, if 2000 uh, BC Dread stuff, if that TV show works out well, that could be awesome as well. Um, yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting yeah. because um, where are, where are where are they with that? Because I haven't like got my um, fingers aren't really really in the pulse. So last month they um, confirmed that they're making a dread show. That's with, basically with Carl. With, with no, they haven't uh, confirmed with Carl, but it would be awesome if they did. And he's yeah. had he has said that he'll be fine with doing that, playing playing dread in a show, which would be great. <laughs> if they just do like a you know sequel of the movie, in a show format, that would actually be fantastic. Um, yeah, shows instead of movies, please. <laughs> That's. That's my takeaway from a lot of the stuff that's been happening right now. In that, yeah, because you condense so much stuff into a movie, and mm. it just ruins it. Uh, exactly. Justice, the Justice League movie for me was like thirty minutes of actual things that were interesting, and the rest of the movie was just blase Nothing. garbage. Um, mm. It was super red. You know, like I've, I've mentioned this before. For me, Avengers had more consequence than fighting in like a weird red place against a villain that no one knew about unless mm. you actually followed the entire storyline from the beginning exactly and it, and it bugged me avengers, it really always bugged had, me. Yeah. avengers always had better yeah better consequences because because of the other elements that they showed you know the um the netflix shows just uh, as a start showed that with them literally talking about the that happened city you know they show that there is actually consequences for their actions yeah Um, and it goes on into the shockwaves go out into which was personally one of my favorites which was uh homecoming Hmm. spider-man exactly Uh, that's definitely one of the best bit of the movies yeah it's yeah so marvel definitely got that they really marvel and disney really pulled it out and they're going to continue pulling it out until until uh people stop wanting to watch um, action hero movies but I don't think that's actually going to happen honestly as much as everyone's just like uh, people will get bored of it eventually I'm like no because they get released in a good span, span of time right yeah, yeah people get sick of DC movies because they're bad but and they Marvel get released movies, directly after the Marvel one does yeah exactly <laughs> they get really so poor um, so obviously those ones are always never going to turn out so well but Marvel they separate their well. They separated their movies very well, you know. We've only just got um, trailer, like the second trailer for um, for Captain Marvel, um, and it's been like half a year since uh, Avengers, right? Yeah. So that's going to be a while before we get the next next point in that saga. So people are people are going to be hyped by then, you know. You give enough time for people to be hyped about it again. It doesn't matter if if at the point. That they were sick of it you know like if they if they came out of avengers last avengers you know affinity war feeling like feeling like they didn't want to watch any more action movies which i don't know how they could feel that because that <laughs> shit got me real hype um <laughs> but if, if that was the case then by the time the next movie comes out that's not going to be the case anymore because it's been like a whole year since you know like yeah. unless they're unless they're the kind of person who like has the entire collection of DVDs and watches them constantly, you're never going to get bored of that because you've got new shit coming out every year. Well, three and next year. We've got Captain Marvel coming out in March, Avengers mm. Endgame coming out in April, and mm. Far From Home, Spider-Man Far From Home in July. Yeah. I don't know how that was going to work out for them if they do all three of those together. Yeah. Um, March, but April, I think that July is pretty close together. But I, yeah, think, I, I, think, think, I think it'll be hype train. Yeah, I think they will be driving the hype train because of Infinity War, mm-hmm. um, but because of Thanos. But other than that, I think 
yeah, that might be the tipping point. But they're, they're basically just really testing the waters with that one, seeing how many they can release at once. Um, and if it doesn't go well for them, then it doesn't go well for them. They'll just space it out more because they realize they've realized that that's what they need to do. That they need to space them out. So, because people forget when they're releasing products that the consumer doesn't actually have infinite money. Exactly. That's it. So trying to release, you know, trying trying to release a Star Wars movie and Ugh. then like six months or three months later releasing another shittier one um, that people stop wanting to buy for that next one. So it's not just like, a, <laughs> you know, as much as you can like put a whole bunch of marketable things on there. If no one's actually got the money to buy this thing, they're not going to buy it and it's going to cause you down shit, especially when you're your basis for the money that you're making is literally that weekend that it's yeah. out of course people are not going to be able to necessarily buy it outright at that point you know like at least on a payday for god's sake <laughs> um all that sort of stuff it's just yeah so marvel really got that figured out um dc really don't with the whole um releasing um justice league immediately after avengers um a whole bunch of other crap they just they're going downhill and the tv shows aren't going to save them because arrow and uh um, flash, S- flash supergirl. and supergirl and constantine at the moment are all kind of garbo um if not i mean they're you know they're watchable for some but otherwise they're just complete garbo so you know whereas things like daredevil and jessica joan they were pretty um pretty wide reaching i'd say um so, I, th- yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed the i didn't enjoy i didn't oh and first was painful very yeah. painful <laughs> it was second season was better but yeah and first that, season yeah. was pretty pretty awful and it caused luke cage second season to be worse because they pulled everybody yeah. off that so yeah. uh, you know at the end of the day i think eggs in one basket you know do pretty a much. season for each show every year like you know don't exactly don't Just, hang them out coming out um, just sort your organize your stuff have the right people in the right place yeah and don't don't push yourself too much and don't pander as much as you think you need to um but pander more than than some th- pander more than the studio wants you to <laughs> yeah um and yeah just just make good stuff please because <laughs> i'm really sad I'm so sad that DC don't get good stuff because they have a fantastic range of comics. So they have amazing really characters with amazing stories and they just exactly. keep making <laughs> they keep really making hammy, garbage. hammy, <laughs> garbagey shit and it just pisses yeah. me off. And they got, you know, they've got fucking um, Momoa as Aquaman. Probably one of the best casting decisions I've ever seen. Yeah. I, I And... I've just finished watching season three of Front, um, Frontier. Yeah. And he is amazing in that. <laughs> oh, is that where he's, uh, where he is actually a Samoan man playing a half Native American? <laughs> he's a half Native American, half Irish, um, half blind. That's so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's based on the, the fur he is, wars. He is Hawaiian. Yeah. He is an islander. <laughs> Oh my god! So and it's funny because in comparison to like the the Native American characters, like the full Native American characters, yeah, he's exactly, like, like a foot <laughs> taller and like a foot <laughs> wider, and it's just like Jesus Christ, yeah. you're not even like, the same not- thing. Yeah. You look nothing like these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. Um, but he's a fantastic actor, um, and he's just the the idea of Aquaman being an islander is so right <laughs> instead of being a blonde Aryan, like he yeah the, yeah exactly so it's 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 really good um so yeah that's definitely one of the best decisions they've ever made um so yeah i did like him in justice league war and they did kind of do that in the beginning of the justice league movie but mm-hmm. I think War was better, where he's just drunk and you just like some dude pulls a crayfish out of the out of a tank and he's like, "Hey, we were talking." It's like, <laughs> in comparison to that, like that well, that moment was cool, where Bruce Wayne mm-hmm. turns up and he's all like, "Hey, there's a guy, he's here. Mm-hmm. I'm giving you the town money." Well, that's the thing. Who is it is. Yeah. Aquaman. Aquaman's actually a really cool character. 
you really actually like look at it properly and not just what everyone else is saying about it um and then having momoa be him is just fantastic because it just gets so much more out of the character um and i think that i think the aquaman movie is probably be in the same vein as um same vein as the wonder woman movie where it's actually going to be the sleeper hits but you that doesn't make a franchise no you know? making one good movie out of a whole bunch does not make a fr- franchise yeah. and having make. yeah and having having good single movies is fine um but if you notice that's kind of not how marvel have been making their money like yeah a lot of the thor movies weren't particularly fantastic a lot of the captain america parts were a bit hammy um and iron man 2 was almost awful um uh, awful, I rewatched that <laughs> recently. It wasn't as bad as I remembered. Some it of the was, parts, some parts cool. of it were pretty cool. Some parts were pretty cool for a Marvel yeah. movie. is garbage, but in comparison, to yeah. like I'm, it's still better than any of DC movies. Yeah, exactly. But all the put together movies, they generally um they generally come together pretty well. Other than Civil War, it was which kind of a bit of a letdown. So I like really Civil the War. One. I like Civil it, War. It should have been way later in the series, but yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, we're not doing it. We're not doing that just yet. We can save that for another podcast. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, overall, the group movies for Marvel were always the like the big deal ones, and they had a lot more going for them. Whereas for DC, all of these single movies have been the better ones. Even like, even like saying that Man, you would it, most people would still even agree that Man of Steel was better than Batman vs Superman. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Man of Steel wasn't particularly great, but yeah, it was. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's kind of it. And like, even then, like Suicide Squad as well is like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I like Suicide so, Squad. It was awful. I like it. Probably. It was so awful. It was a fantastic comedy movie. <laughs> yeah, where you can laugh at how bad it is. <laughs> I, I like it. I think the characters are well done. I like the music to it. I think it's a fun. It's a fun turn your brain off for you know two hours movie. Yeah, that's that's not a good. Uh, that's not a thing for me anymore. I don't believe that that's a thing that should be the case anymore. Because there's a too many movies like that. The oh turn my your god, brain off ones. Um, you know, like Transformers. I, I tried to do, thing. literally just segueing into it. I tried yeah. to watch the first because uh, on Netflix, what was just released was a Teenage Ninja Turtles movie. Oh no! And I tried watching that, and I got about halfway through. So that it's actually been finally like you know, where the turtles and April O'Neil played by Transformers yep. is literally like they're my turtles. I was just like, nope, 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 nope. Don't shit on your own yep. canon. Nope, bye. I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. And then I watched uh, yeah. uh, something decent. I think it was a Tom Cruise movie. Yeah, Jack Reacher. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, but yeah, that's um, that's basically my my take on it. Is there are enough turn your brain off movies already without ruining and, selling of our childhoods? Yeah, without without just making bad other movies. Like you can you can stop doing that now. You know, we've reached a point where enough people are are their own critic. <laughs> for movies that we don't need that anymore you know it's just it seems weird that we still have it yeah i I mean i'm fine with like i'm fine with movies that are bad on purpose or like bad bad good like the room um and that sort of that sort of b movie level stuff stuff that like you can still enjoy if even if you don't turn your brain off because if you have your brain on you just find it funny because it's stupid that sort of movie's fine yeah but i think i think don't have I think Edgar Wright. I think Edgar Wright ruined that for everybody because he set the bar mm. far too high. Um, yeah, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and this is uh, no, it's not. This is the end. Uh, that's the other really good one. I will segue onto momentarily. <laughs> um, the World's End, with the mm. Cornetto trilogy, and even when they Simon Pegg and Nick Frost did it themselves with Paul, mm. those movies are fun by being silly and being fun. Mm but being like a serious comedy, like actually having decent writing and decent, ev- everything about it is really, really well done and really well polished. And they've come out with something that's actually pretty and stands, the, like you said earlier, stands the test of time. Yeah. Versus I don't think we'll remember a year from now, six, well, maybe longer than that. Oh my God. I can hear people mm-hmm. and, and, and police cars in the background. 
Oh, great. Yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe so I can actually afford a recording studio. <laughs> so I don't have to live in the hut anymore. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, we won't remember this stuff, but I think we'll remember the Marvel movies for a long damn time. Like oh, yeah, a long absolutely. damn time. And that is what I'm saying. Is they'll like, make a cultural mo- impact. And yeah, you can say the things like the Rome, but the reality is, is that that whole, the story of that whole thing's weird. Oh, yeah, that's a bit of a mess. But no, what I'm saying is like, movies like movies that aren't like don't have like top production value can still make an impact and movies that are still like bad subjectively can still be okay in this sort of way you know like they can they can appease to enough audiences or they can they can they can for someone who's has who has their mind on can still get something out of them which is why i pull up the room because as much as like the the Tell acting is bad. The, story is bad the whole thing is bad in that way people who know movie stuff can still get a good kick out of it it's actually of interesting because i show i was watching a person rip apart it cinematically like the actual mm. how it, and apparently it's really well done like i i stopped focusing on that because there was a point in my life where i used to watch a movie i used to buy a movie I'd watch mm. a movie at the movie theater. It would release on DVD because DVD is the only mm. thing I had. I would mm-hmm. then watch the movie and then I would hit start again and put the commentary on straight away. Okay. So I'd watch the movie again with commentary on. And mm. I've stopped doing that because I physically don't have time anymore because yeah. I'm not like a student <laughs> or working part time or unemployed or anything yeah. like that. But it is one exactly. of those things that used to take me and give me more appreciation for the actual art. Yeah. These days, I couldn't like. Oh, my favorite ones. Um, I think it's Hellboy One. I think it's Hellboy One, mm. and okay. literally that has the cast recording a podcast of their commentary while watching mm. the movie. So the movie's mm. in the bottom corner of the screen. Yeah. More people need to focus on like what, like that whole gif of um, when Ben Affleck realizes that no one liked. The, the Batman vs. <laughs> Superman and it's, and it's, and it's like zooms straight into his face and it's like hello darkness my old friend yeah it's, that's Absolutely. sad it's like Ben he should have got his own I hate this stuff he should have got his own movie yes in between no. in between <laughs> <laughs> or when they did when they did Suicide Squad it should have been a Solon Arkham where Batman is a main character in that yeah. It's literally called I, Batman or Silver Narcom. Yeah. I feel like Suicide Squad came too early, first off, because Suicide Squad doesn't happen for ages in the in the canon. Yeah. Ages. Yeah. Right. Um they what what Snyder and the and Warner Brothers did to to the canon for Justice League is is a utter shambles, basically. They threw in a bunch of the most popular comics just threw them at stuff and just saw what stuck. And that's why it is just a complete mess. Um, and that's why Wonder Woman is the only one that really sticks out because there aren't any really popular Wonder Woman comics. <laughs> um, not in that, that not, not to say that they're not, not anymore, popular. Not anymore. But what I'm saying is like, there's none that, that there's none that really sell her creation story in a, in a set way because she's changed so many times over her, her period. There's absolutely comics that, that she has that are fantastically um, poignant and, and really good. Absolutely. There are fantastic comics from her, but not in the same way that Batman and Superman have fantastic omnibuses. Yeah. You know, they're like the killing joke and all that sort of stuff. There's none that exists like that. And Dark so, Knight Returns. Yeah. So what they did with Batman and Superman is they just threw that sort of stuff together. You know, they did the Batman and Superman, um, Batman versus Superman comic, which is not even related to the real um, canon of Superman and Batman anyway. And they just threw it all in there. And that's why it was a mess. Total mess. And Suicide Squad comes way later past Justice League stuff. Like, it is a, it is way later down the line, especially in the Batman sort of saga as well, because... Yeah. You know, Harley is meant to have completely cut herself off from from Joker by this point. She has literally been in prison for ages. Yeah. That is what's meant to, meant to happen there. So that whole thing, just a mess. What they should have done, instead of going straight into making multi-grouped things, is actually do single movies that aren't, um, aren't creation movies, 
but just standalone movies with these with these actors. So there should have been a Batman movie. There should have been at least two Wonder Woman movies. There should have been an Aquaman movie. There should have been a, a Flash movie. There should have been a um, Cyborg movie. There should have been them already. They should or, have been set up as characters already. Or what I said from the beginning is we should have done a literal Justice League war. I think it's Justice League war when Darkseid turns up. I'm 90% well, yeah, sure. Justice League. Darkseid should have actually absolutely been the enemy for Justice League. Yeah, 100%. But 100%. I like, you know, each each of the characters being giving giving them fifteen minutes, and they're all finding the boom boxes in their own time. And like, I love the interaction between Hal Jordan and Batman, you know, the Green Lantern. Oh yeah, and he's literally like, oh yeah, Green Lantern. Should have, oh my god. <laughs> if, yeah, but if that Green was, Lantern, uh... if the Green Lantern movie wasn't bad, then I think Justice League would have pulled itself up way before it did, and would have actually been fantastic. It just needed Green Lantern to actually be good. And it is because they half the asked that. Yeah. It is all because of that. And they really shouldn't have, they also shouldn't have done um, Reynolds as well. As much as he's a fantastic actor and he's the best Deadpool, is the only Deadpool, <laughs> um, <laughs> he shouldn't have been Green Lantern. Yeah, and Pikachu. He shouldn't have been the Green Lantern in any shape or form. Just no. No Green Lantern. <laughs> it should have been, um, it should have been. Uh, John, John, John yeah. Stewart, instead. yeah, hundred percent should have been John, because there are and enough. That- oh, and it could have been, um, Ezra, um, uh, Jesus, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Idris, Idris Elba, yeah, 100%. that would have actually been that would have been too good. That would have been, yeah, no, I don't think I don't think the world could have handled that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stand by my statement. Sorry, folks, I'm fair not enough. Taking it back. Yeah, fair enough. Well, it's uh, there's been two hours, folks. So we're gonna yeah. it, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, well, it won't be two hours for you because condensity, but that's completely irrelevant. Mm. Um, any so we're looking. There's been some good things this year. There's been some bad things this year. There's been fun group activities this year. Um, the only thing that I say is I'm looking forward to what's coming next year. I'm looking forward to the continuance of great titles coming out in vr because i oh, think yeah. i think that could possibly until we get an era where we're inserting bloody usb not usb there'll be hdmi <laughs> or ethernet <laughs> cables into the back of our brain it's the yeah. closest you know i'm physically sore folks i'm physically mm-hmm. sore from playing creed for 40 minutes in a row yeah. that to me is the best thing anybody could do mm. you know if you if you don't want to stand up play beat saber you know that mm. that whole era of you know why you know michelle obama coming out and trying to encourage people to stop being <laughs> obese in america and then pokemon <laughs> go comes out and everyone's running around their neighborhoods like all it takes yeah. is one little spark to all start the a, fire, fires of rev, a revolution and to be brutally honest you know that whole genre of ready player one coming out and showing, you know, like this whole idea of VR, you know, contained world, and they're all running on, you know, four, like three dimensional treadmills. I don't think we'll ever get to that point. I think the lean pads yeah. that they've brought out, and it'd you be physically be. lean on the sides of it, and you're in like a, a harness set, but it's mm. too expensive for the home market. Yeah, you'll never be able to pull that off properly. Um, but I think that'll be a good gimmick to have in like a um, like a time zone arcade sort of sense. Yeah, hundred percent. But yeah. A home console sort of stuff absolutely but once um once we get mind hacking off the ground <laughs> then um absolutely absolutely totally yeah at boring company on twitter you know elon mm. elon if you're listening master yep. elon if you're listening yeah i i volunteer to have one of those jack points put on the back of my head please mm. i volunteer as tribute i'm holding up three fingers yeah exactly um, because i think i think from a gaming point of view that would be well, you know what I, I, I tell you this I'm, I'm going to go through this one little statement and then you can say a bit and then we can end mm-hmm. 100% pornography has to get behind it <laughs> yes they yes, it does. they killed Betamax because they supported because they supported VHS yeah HD DVD died because they supported Blu-ray VR's here and guess what you can type VR and then porn into any search thing and find it. So I think the next statement would be 
Yep, if they can do brain jacking, if you can, if you can jack in to uh, jack out. <laughs> jack in um, to jack in. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think that'll be the future. And like you know, the people are like, oh, yeah. oh well, that's that's cyber cybernetics. It's like, think about it it's this way: really. people who have been injured and have cybernetic three D printed limbs now, mm. and they are fantastic back from you the know. Thing is like the the technical term for for Android that you use it you have well not android cyborg is you just have technology aiding you in some way yeah i wear glasses technically i'm a cyborg so you know it's not it's not that far from from reality really just it, we needed the only thing to, that i think that will stop it would be the fact that you'd be able to combine everything into your hands like so goodbye phones oh yeah that's fine I think that'd be fine. hilarious if you had to put your thing, your like your in, your pinky finger in your thumb, like your thumb in your ear, <laughs> on the phone, and like your side. I don't think they would even. I don't think you'd even need to do that if you've put it in your brain properly, right? If you've got it, an actual implant in your brain, then you could just be having a conversation with somebody in your mind as like a thought. Mind of, phone. Yeah, oh my god, that'd be the best way to get out of stuff. It'd be like, hey guys, my mind phone's ringing. Hello, how are you? <laughs> you know, everything's good. <laughs> What are you up to? No, oh, I don't think this would, is important. Uh, you just like walk out of the room. I don't think that would. Uh, I don't think that would fly at all. <laughs> I'm just thinking that, like, you know, you can have it going on in the back of your head um, if you really needed to, if like you're on like the bus or something. But then obviously you could like you could still do that. That like the the symbol that you have, you know, where you put your, th- your pinky and your thumb out, you know, and you have the shape of an L on your forehead. Um, no, you have your head out and you're talking into it could actually legitimately be a thing that you're doing um but not like person. but yeah but not because like not because there's actually a receiver or thing in your, in your hand but because you're showing people that you're actually on the phone <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, and then you use your index finger as an aerial yeah yeah um so going forward i think vr is the future um I, yep. we, we're yep. gonna look at you know first person you know that whole first sorry first person storyline not basing completely around like the the first person the not the first person the single player <laughs> storyline being the tutorial for multiplayer I, I hope we see a lot more of that in coming year uh, i hope we see more fantastic vr titles and i hope that people get with along the bad wagon of guess what the community doesn't want microtransactions to unlock we don't want loot crates characters. unlocking progress towards characters. Yeah, we are happy to not. buy skins and yeah. cosmetics and dancing, but we mm-hmm. are not happy buying a loot perks that might give us Darth Vader. Yeah, or a new gun. Especially not considering it's gambling. Yeah, and it's it, there, yeah. there's laws against game, gambling. If your game contains gambling, it should be R eighteen. Yeah, so. and then it should be controlled by your pe- local people at GameStop. Yeah. <laughs> Liquor license. This is the other thing. Okay, I'm not going to go on a rant for the next 10 minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> to it. Liquor licenses get removed from businesses who sell liquor to underage children. Why yep. do they not get game licensing removed from people who sell out R18 things to people that are 18? Um, because the parents question. buy it. That's the other problem. Yeah. Because the parents can still legally buy it for them. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, you know. Maybe having required required uh, email addresses attached to your account. Yeah, if yeah, if um, if gambling does, if if loot crate is properly listed as gambling, then I do think that um, that that will become a thing. That game shops will not be able to sell games um, unless they have like a gambling license, basically. Yeah. So, you know, they won't sell those games. Be fun. Yeah, they probably just won't sell those games, which means they'll have to buy them online. Which means I have to have a credit card. Which means they'll have to get the parents' credit card or wait till the parents are yeah. asleep and still is. Exactly. <laughs> like it should be done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any any yeah. any final thoughts, sir? Um, the world's going to hell. Um, but there should be some cool stuff that happens before then. Yeah, we'll, and um, we'll get yeah. another new Call of Duty game out of it, or another <laughs> HBO series. <laughs> you know, we've, we've had the Gulf War. We've had World War Two had world war yep. one you know you gotta have earth conflicts or otherwise people can't write their own fiction exactly because <laughs> we're that boring all right then thank you for everyone who joined us and we'll uh catch you next time